Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to start with the revision of the upper limb. So in this part, we are going to focus on the pectoral region and the arm. So starting with the clavicle. So you are going to uh, do clavicle and the following objectives. So you should be able to know the general features of the clavicle and its side determination. You should be able to describe the attachment of different muscles, ligaments on the different sides of the bone, uh, likely on the medial two third and the lateral one third part. And you should be able to describe all the joints formed by the clavicle, jo clavicle bone. That's the sternoclavicular joint and the acromioclavicular joint. And then lastly, the applied anatomy, basically the fracture concern. So we are going to do that in this part. First of all, starting with the clavicle, clavicle is the only bony attachment between the shoulder and the uh, trunk. So it is uh, the bone basically having the S-shaped contour, as you can see here. So it is having the two end, one lateral flattened end, that is the acromial end, and one the, you know, um, broader or the quadrangular medial end, that is known as the sternal end. So this uh, medial two-third part is uh, convex forwardly and this lateral one-third part is concave forwardly. So this is how you are, you are going to recognize it. So, and its superior aspect is more or less smooth in comparison with its inferior aspect. So this is how you are going to you know, um, see this bone. So this is the clavicle of right side. So now moving on to its attachment. So uh, I'm just going to, so this is the anterior surface which you can see over here of the uh, bone so the anterior superior part basically and this is the posterior superior part basically and this is the superior surface so here we are going to do with the attachment so first of all starting with the medial end so this uh, anterior medially there is the attachment of the pectoralis major muscle and anterior laterally there is the uh, attachment of the you know deltoid muscle posterior laterally there is the attachment of trapezius muscle and the posterior medially there is the attachment of the sternohyoid muscle over the superior aspect, we are having the attachment of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Basically, these are the clavicular fibers of the SCM muscle. Then over both the ends, there are the attachment of the, you know, uh, sternoclavicular ligament and the acromioclavicular ligament, which are going to, you know, uh, act as the, you know, um, strength for these, uh, these conjoining joints, basically. So now moving so a view, so this is the inferior view of the bone. As you can see, it is more kind of roughened in uh, nature. Uh, so starting with the lateral inferior uh, surface, so basically it is having a very constant and um, quite very, you know, a good amount of tuber uh, tuberosity region. So which is containing the tubercle. This is known as the conoid tubercle and the lateral, rough, lateral roughened region. So this uh, conoid tubercle is meant for the attachment of the conoid ligament and this lateral roughened area is going to be, you know, act as the attachment of the trapezoid ligament. So both of these ligaments are collectively called as the coracoclavicular ligament. When we move more, you know, uh, medially, we are going to have a one groove and uh, there are two lips which are just, you know, elevated region apart from this, as you can see, this whitish lines. So this groove is known as a subclavian root groove which is going to act as the attachment of the subclavius muscle. Then we are going to have this, you know, impression over the medial inferior medial surface. So that is for the posterior sternoclavicular ligament. So this is about the different attachments over here. Now we move on to the clinical aspect. In the clinical aspect, they, uh, you know, the commonest fracture of the clavicle bone which is happening it is at the junction of the medial two-third and the lateral one-third so it is you know out falling on the outside hands or something you know there is any foul injury or certain like of injury we are going to more commonly going to cause the uh, fracture at the clavicle joint oh, sorry clavicle bone the scapula uh, in this scapula uh, the objectives are to know the general features. You should be also knowing it's how to determine its size. You should be able to, you know, uh, know the vertebral level of the different parts of the scapula. You should be able to know the attachment of muscles on the different sides of the bone. So basically, we are going to ask in exam like provide the uh, what is the attachment at the coracoid process, what are the attachment at the acromion process, medial border, lateral border, anterior surface, and the posterior surface of the scapula. So you should be knowing in that respect, okay? And then you should be able to describe the you know what kind of joint is shoulder joint, how what are the different articulating structures of this joint, acromioclavicular joint, and their attachment of their capsule. So that you should be knowing, okay? 
so this is the anterior view of the scapula so scapula is a very uh, you know uh, large triangular flat kind of uh, bone so it is uh, triangular in nature so there is the apex which is lying inferiorly so in this bone there are three angles three processes and three borders and lastly the two surfaces so first of all starting with the angle so the as you know it is a triangular muscle uh, triangular bone so there will be the inferiorly lying apex which is known as the inferior angle then over the you know base the broader base at the two ends of this base we are having the superior angle and the lateral angle so uh, first of all starting with the borders so these are the inferior angle uh, the border in between the inferior and the superior angle is going to be called as the medial border the border in between the lateral angle and superior angle is known as the superior border and the border in between the lateral uh, angle and the inferior angle is going to be called as the lateral border lateral border is more or less kind of thickened uh, in comparison to the medial one which is very thin okay apart from this over the you know lateral angle we are having the comma shaped glenoid fossa that this glenoid fossa is going to uh, act as a it is going to articulate with the head of the spherical head of the humerus to form the shoulder joint then apart from this uh, this glenoid fossa just inferior to the glenoid fossa we are having the infraglenoid tubercle the superior to the glenoid fossa we are ho having very you know small kind of tubercle that is known as the supraglenoid tubercle so apart from that we are having one extension from here this process is known as the coracoid process this is a hooked uh, finger like projection so it is known as the coracoid process and uh, above which they are they, we are having the acromion process so this is as this is the anterior view so or the costal uh, surface uh, so we are having one fossa uh, this whole area is known as the subscapular fossa slide in this slide you can see that the whole of the posterior surface is divided into two compartment basically now these compartments are known as the fossae so the fossa which are lying above to this spine of scapula is known as the supraspinous fossa the fossa which is lying below to this spine which is known as the infraspinous fossa you know the borders and you know the you know angles so i'm not i'm not going to in that depth so this is the superior border and this is the coracoid process which is just the extension from there and this is the lateral angle as you can see that in between the coracoid process and this superior border we are having one notch so this notch is acting as a passage for the suprascapular nerve and vessel so you should be knowing what are the contents of this suprascapular notch and how they are uh, you know moving downwards through this greater scapular notch so there is a greater scapular notch which i am not able to show you here but i just want to show you the passage how the neurovascular bundles are going apart from that this is the you know spinal scapula which is extending as the acromion process so acromion process is the highest most point over your shoulder so you can all palpate that also in your uh, in now we move on to the you know attachment part so this is the anterior surface so this is the subscapular fossa which is going to provide attachment for the subscapularis muscle now i move on to the you know border so different at attachment over the border so this is the medial border over the medial border we are having the one major muscle attachment that is the serratus anterior muscle so this serratus anterior muscle is basically having the eight digitation so apart from eight we are having the majorly uh, one two three and rest of the five are going to come out from here so they are like eight digitation of the serratus anterior which are coming from here then we move on to the medial border so medial border we are having at the infraglenoid tubercle we are having this uh, long head of the triceps muscle then over the superior border just near the you know uh, suprascapular notch we are having the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle then uh, more importantly uh, you should know you should be knowing the attachment of the different muscle over the uh, the coracoid process so that are at near the tip of that process is the coracobrachialis muscle by short head of the biceps brachii the pectoralis minor muscle and the two uh, you know parts of the coracoclavicular ligament as we discussed earlier so these are the another attachment of those ligaments then uh, this is the supraglenoid uh, tubercle there will be the uh, you know attachment of the long head of the biceps uh, brachii muscle now we move on to the next slide showing the you know posterior view. So in this uh, slide as you can see starting with the you know posterior surface so this is the infra uh, spinatus fossa or infraspinous fossa which is going to give attachment to the infraspinous muscle this is the supraspinous fossa just behind this so that is going to be with the attachment of the supraspinatus muscle 
then we move on to the border so over the lateral border we are having certain attachment just here this is the glenoid fossa so just below the glenoid fossa we are having the infraglenoid tubercle that is going to provide attachment to the triceps long head of the triceps muscle the same as in the anterior aspect too then just below that we are having the you know teres minor muscle this both attachment are teres minor muscle and in between them there is a artery which is passing out that is known as the circumflex humeral artery then below to this teres minor muscle we are having the attachment of the teres major muscle and then at inferior angle we are having the attachment of the latissimus dorsi muscle then coming on to the medial border so over the medial border near to the superior angle we are having the attachment of the levator scapula muscle you should be also knowing it could be asked like what are the attachment over the medial border so in that aspect you should be able to know that just below the levator scapula you are having rhomboid minor and then you are having the rhomboid major muscle then over the this is the you know uh, spine of the scapula as you can see and this spine of the scapula is extending as the acromion process so there is two lips so this is the lower lip and this is the uh, this is the upper lip and this is the lower lip so over the lower lip there will be the attachment of the posterior fibers of the deltoid muscle and here you can find certain intramuscular septa which are formed by the and certain uh, middle fibers also which are going to be you know coming from the acromion part so that are acting as the you know multipinnate muscle so intramuscular septa or could also be seen over here and over the upper lip there is the you know attachment of the uh, trapezius muscle so this is all about the attached different attachment of the you know uh, scapula basically so you should be uh, could be asked the scapular movements how they are formed you should be also could be also about the fractures basically uh, and then we are you could also be asked the different you know uh, the Cap, the part of the you know scapula which is going to be playing in the you know shoulder movement basically the glenohumeral uh, joint movement so you should be also knowing that uh, we move on to the uh, shoulder joint so shoulder joint is the joint in between the you know uh, the spherical head of the humerus and the you know glenoid fossa of the uh, scapula bone so this is going to form a ball and socket variety of synovial joint so this is a simple joint so there are a lot of movements which are happening over here so they are the multi axial movement so you should be also you could be asked like what are the different muscles causing the you know uh, movement at the, this joint so you should be knowing all the movements uh, muscles performing the movements okay the ligaments basically so is, as it is a synovial joint so there will be a fibrous capsule there and a lot of glenohumeral you know, uh, ligament okay so there are so many things which yeah, you should be you could you should know and you should be knowing the you know different bursas which are present uh, in this joint to uh, provide a more lubricated aspect so this is all you should know about the anatomy of the shoulder joint and it could be asked to you okay now we move on to the humerus so in the humerus you should be able to you know describe its general features in its, its side determination you should be able to describe the muscle attachment at its upper end shaft lower end of the humerus you should be also knowing the uh, you should know the you know attachment capsular attachment over the shoulder and the elbow joint as these are the two joints formed by the you know humerus bone then you should be able to describe different you know neurovascular structures which are in relation that are the uh, to the humerus at the surgical neck radial groove behind the medial epicondyle so this is very much important and you know very usually asked question so and after that you should be able to discuss uh, about the uh the joints from the uh, humerus and the applied anatomy of the uh, humerus we move, we move uh, with the you know uh, uh, this uh, general features of the uh, humerus bone so in the general features as you can see this is the anterior view of the humerus bone it is a long bone which is having upper end lower end and a shaft and uh, upper end is consist of the globular head a spherical head as you can see over here so this is the globular head and there are three necks basically the anatomical neck which is just a constricted uh, you know line which is in between the globular head and the you know rest of the part and then we are having a you know surgical neck which is again a constricted part in between the whole of the globular head and the shaft remaining shaft so this is the you know surgical neck why it is called surgical neck because there is uh, you know a very common fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus which are present here then uh, we are having the two tubercles that is the greater tubercle and the lesser tubercle we are going to see this in magnified version also and then we are having a you know intertubercular sulcus which is sulcus which is present in between these two tubercles basically and uh, uh, one thing i just uh, want to say that uh, 
this anatomical uh, neck is uh, you know uh, going to uh, act as the site for the attachment of the capsule so we are going to discuss that in later on side uh, slides and then this is the shaft on which or the anterior aspect we are having very important tuberosity that is the deltoid tuberosity and then we are having the lower end which is containing the lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle supracondylar ridge and etc this is the capitulum and the trochlear part we are going to see in later on so this is a uh, more or kind, more or less kind of uh, which side of humerus it is a right side of humerus so you should be knowing that also Posterior aspect in the posterior aspect, starting from the lower end, we are having the olecranon fossa. We are having the certain borders, and uh, on the posterior aspect of the shaft, we are having the radial groove for the passage of the you know radial nerve basically. And uh, here, this is the uh, surgical neck where there will be passage of the axillary nerve, which is going to present. And this is the you know medial epicondyle, and there will be the passage of the ulnar nerve from here. So you should be able to know this. These are very commonly asked questions, and this is your anatomical neck basically again here. So uh, this is uh, all about, and this is the oblique ridge which is just present over here. For magnified version of the upper aspect. So this is you know anatomical neck, and uh, I just want to show you how the you know uh, capsule is being asked. So you can see that this is the you know more or less kind of your uh, chalk like uh, this chalk the mark uh, structure of the chalk is going to call as the anatomical neck. Uh, and uh, this is the same side for the attachment of the capsular ligament for the you know. Um, shoulder joint but the uh, capsular ligament is divided at two places uh, one at the you know intertubercular circles because there is one uh, you know muscle which is going to be passed from there there is a muscle tendon the tendon of the biceps long head of the biceps basically which is going to pass so that, that's why this area is devoid of uh, this synovial this um, capsular ligament and one more on over the inferior and uh, posterior inferior aspect sorry medio inferior aspect here also it is divided so it is just you know uh, enlarging here in this region so i'm just going to show you that in a different uh, upcoming slide slide we can see that the lower end or the more magnified view so this is the capitulum trochlea these are going to be the structure are going to be formed joint uh, in the uh, Humero radial joint and this trochlea is going to participate in the humero ulnar joint basically. And you can see that this is the capsule uh, or attachment of the elbow joint. As you can see, this chalk marked structure over here. And this is the olecranon fossa in which there will be the articulation of the head of the uh, head of the ulnar bone. Uh, we are going to see the attachment. So it is again very much similar. You can say this is the head of the humerus bone. And this is the capsular attachment and this is whole of the you know neck of the anatomical neck and you can see it is divided over here near the upper aspect of the intertubercular circles so this is the greater tubercle this is the lesser tubercle there will be attachment of the subscapularis muscle and this is the you know greater tubercle there will be attachment of the supraspinatus muscle uh, infraspinatus muscle and the teres major this is basically on the you know posterior aspect just uh, below uh, just under this uh, intertubercular sulcus we are having the you know three muscles so intertubercular mus uh, sulcus is having the two lips one lateral and one medial and in between them there is the floor of the intertubercular sulcus so this um, uh, over the you know um, me, um, lateral lip we are having the attachment of the pectoralis major over the you know medial we are having the uh, sorry pectoralis major on the lateral lip and the uterus major on the medial lip and from the floor there will be uh, attachment of the lattice muscle and in the shaft we are having the major uh, one major muscle which is going to tell you that is the deltoid of the deltoid tuberosity and over the lower aspect we are having the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle medial epicondyle act as the common flexor region lateral epicondyle act as the uh, common extensor region so you should be knowing all these structures and how they are you know performed so this is more or less about the humerus now we move on to its applied anatomy so basically uh, surgical neck uh, the uh, fracture at the surgical neck is very much important the shaft uh, cuff fracture and then we are having the fracture at the supracondylar you know ridge so these are the different uh, kind of fracture which are going to happen and there are the three nerves which are in close approximation to this bone at this uh, uh, certain this uh, area so that is the at the surgical neck we are having the axillary nerve radial groove we are having the you know radial nerve and just behind the medial epicondyle we are having the uh, ulnar nerve so this is uh, more or less uh, all about the um, this bone uh, our humerus bone so uh, muscular part so in the uh, muscular part you should be able to identify the muscle and their attachments uh, function and the nerve supply of the different muscle you should be knowing that 
pectoral region. So this is the specimen we have just made after you know removing the skin, superficial fascia, and the deep fascia. So first of all, starting with it, this is your you know nipple region, and uh, this is the areola, the darkened area which is just present along uh, in the circumferent part of this nipple. And then we are having you know very large muscle here present over here that is known as the pectoralis major muscle. And then this pectoralis major is having the two type of the fiber, one which are coming from the sternocostal aspect, and other which are coming from the mandibulum and the clavicular part basically. So these are the two type of the fibers and then these are the anterior fiber of the you know deltoid and in between the deltoid and the you know pectoralis major muscle there is a groove that is known as the deltopectoral groove so this deltopectoral groove is uh, you know act as a site for the passage of the cephalic vein so you should be in, uh, able to name this also we after uh, in this image we had just reflected out the you know uh, pectoralis major muscle as you can see here so you can we can found the pectoralis minor muscle over here and then i think you should all be able to see this very thin uh, you know thread like structure that is nothing but just the you know medial pectoral nerve which is just piercing out the pectoralis minor and it is and it is going to supply the pectoralis major muscle so after that we are having you know one more nerve which is the lateral pectoral nerve which is also supplying both of the pectorals major as well as minor muscles so you should be able to know in the back of the shoulder region you are you, you are able to you know see this uh, you know posterior fibers of the deltoid muscle we are having this long head of the triceps uh, brachii muscle then we are having this is the latissimus dorsi muscle which is coming from you know a lower back and it is just going to attach in the you know humerus as we discussed earlier and then this is the teres major muscle and then this is the you know infraspinatus and this is the you know supraspinatus this is the region for the supraspinatus muscle over here and then we are having this teres minor muscle then we move on to the anterior aspect so we can see that this is the anterior aspect of the scapular region and this is the anterior aspect of your arm basically so this is the subscapularis muscle as you all know so you should be able to know its action or supply etc and its attachment and this is the bicep brachii muscle you can see this is the long head of the bicep brachii muscle and then this is the coracobrachialis muscle which is just coming from the you know tip of the coracoid process so you should be able to know their function and their nerve supply on to the brachial plexus in the brachial plexus you should be uh, knowing the formation division of the brachial plexus you should be able to describe the branches uh, of the uh, you know different cords medial lateral and the posterior cord you should be you know knowing the um, uh, the uh, you know course and the distribution of the median ulnar and the radial and the axillary now it, it is you know it could be going to be asked and basically this uh, clinical aspect would be going to ask like you know short knot could come like what, what is this drop saturday now can see claw hand ape hand ape thumb deformity carpal tunnel syndrome clump case paralysis and the house palsy so you should be able to know this all uh, clinical aspect of the brachial plexus as well so these are going to be asked in your exam Moving with the you know brief discussion of the how the brachial plexus is formed. So brachial plexus is formed by the you know uh, five roots C5, C6, C7, C8, and from these roots the three trunks are going to be formed. So C5, C6 root, the ventral root are going to form the superior trunk. C7 is going to continue as the medial trunk, and the C8 and T1 are going to form the inferior trunk. And from this trunk there are the two division on from each of the trunk the anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior. And then from the superior trunk, the anterior division of the superior trunk and the middle trunk are going to meet to form the lateral cord. Uh, all of the posterior uh, divisions of the different trunks are going to meet to form the posterior cord. And the anterior division of the inferior trunk is going to continue as the medial cord. So from the lateral cord, there, uh, there is, uh, you know, three kind of branches. So that is the lateral pectoral nerve, as we've seen earlier, going to supply pectoralis major. Muscular cutaneous nerve, going to supply the biceps brachii, crocobrachialis, and the brachialis muscle. Very commonly asked question. And then this lateral root of the median nerve, which is going to form the median nerve. So if there is lateral root, there will be a medial root, which is coming from the medial cord, basically. So, uh, so they are the different branches from the medial cord. That is the medial pectoral. We had seen that. And then there is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, the medial root of the median root, and then the ultimately the ulnar nerve. And then last but not the least, the posterior cord. We are going to have the upper subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, the lower subscapular nerve, and the majorly, you know, very importantly, the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. The axillary nerve is going to supply your 
uh, deltoid and your teres minor muscle and the radial nerve is going to you know supply all of the extensor muscle of your arm and the forearm region so af after that there are certain extra branches so that you should be knowing uh, see the you know different uh, nerves so this is you know superior uh, middle and the inferior trunks so from there there are the different divisions so as you can see that the uh, middle anterior division and they are going to form the lateral cord and more importantly from the lateral cord you can see this is the you know musculocutaneous nerve which is going to our single you know, biceps recti muscle and from there this is the medial root of uh, sorry the lateral root of the median nerve and uh, lateral pectoral limb i am not able to show you in this diagram and then we are having this posterior cord and from posterior cord we are having the major nerve that is the axillary nerve which is going to supply the you know deltoid and the teres uh, minor muscle then we are having the you know, largest branch of the posterior cord that is your radial nerve and then we are having this median nerve which is formed by the you know medial root and the lateral root of the median nerve so medial root is coming from the medial cord and uh, medial cord is having the one more major branch that is the ulnar nerve which is just coming under this region and this is the median now so now we will move on. so in this first of all i just want to tell you about the different muscles so this is the biceps brachii as you all know this is the coracobrachialis muscle uh, this is the tendon of biceps brachii which is uh, you know one of the content of cubital fossa this is the brachial artery this is again one of the you know content of the cubital fossa. move on to the uh, next slide so in this slide what we had done we had just reflected out uh, you know the biceps brachii uh, belly muscle belly of the biceps brachii and you can see this you know twigs small twigs this is your coracobrachialis muscle and you can see these are the small twigs of the nerves which are supplying so these are nothing these are just the you know musculocutaneous nerve branches of the musculocutaneous nerve and then we are able to see that this is the you know uh, coming from the lateral cord and this is the lateral root of the median nerve present over here which is going to join uh, with the you know medial counterpart to form the median nerve now this medial root of the median nerve is coming from the medial cord basically so this is the medial cord as you can see over here and this is the one major artery uh, major nerve uh, which is just coming that is your ulnar nerve that is your ulnar nerve which is just coming over here so i just try to show you that ulnar nerve is coming like this and um, i had also may put some you know animated part over here to show you how uh, important structures are present over here next slide so here i just want to show you that this is your posterior cord which is just extending as the radial nerve now this radial nerve is passing into the posterior compartment of the arm through your radial groove as you uh, know it earlier it is passing from the radial groove of the humerus and it is going to give branches to the you know um, uh, this triceps muscle both uh, triceps and the enconius muscle and then it is again coming into the anterior compartment here it is going to divide into the superficial and the deep branches so it is just going to uh, pass out on, uh, pass on onto the you know or lower aspect into the uh, forearm and the arm, the uh, forearm and the hand region, basically. So this is more or less about the different uh, aspect of the, uh, you know, brachial plexus. You should be knowing the, you know, different uh, injuries. Basically, in the wrist drop, there is an injury of the radial nerve at your elbow level or maybe at your wrist level, and then you are having the apex deformity. That is again the part of your median nerve ka injury. Uh, your carpal tunnel syndrome that is due to entrapment of the median nerve in your carpal tunnel this is again you know going to be discussed in your forearm and the hand part and then uh, we are having the claw hand so in the claw hand there will be the injury of the ulnar nerve basically and then uh, lastly we are having the aus paralysis and the clumcus paralysis aus paralysis is going to be caused due to the you know uh, stretch injury at the time of the parturition at the upper you know uh, cervical level and at the lower cervical level we could there could be an injury of uh, this uh, clump case paralysis, paralysis basically the c81 roots are going to be involved and in the case of the house paralysis the upper segments are going to be involved so basically this is more or less about the brachial plexus and uh, you should be knowing all these structures and you should be able to you know identify hope you uh, i hope you understand uh, all the parts so uh, questions are always welcome from your side thank you